Hello cool kid! Here we're gonna look at how you're gonna use your micrometer screw gauge, MSG. Not the one that you eat. So what is a micrometer screw gauge? Ah, it's this thing. So, how do you use it? Step 1, put the box on your table. Step 2, open the box. Okay la, make sure it's a micrometer. Okay la, it's correct. Okay, step 2, open the box and ta-da! You see this micrometer here. And look, something very convenient they did is, you see this? This 0.01mm is the smallest division. Ah, they already told you. So the instrument uncertainty by itself has an uncertainty of 0.01mm. Only the instrument uncertainty, ah, when you're actually measuring stuff, there will be more uncertainty. So how do you read this micrometer screw gauge? Well, to do that, we're going to look at the anatomy. This lock nut is locked. If you find it hard to turn, means it's probably locked already. So you make sure you switch. Okay. Then you have the main scale inside there. So that's this thing over here. Okay. If I unscrew it, it's like opening and closing your water bottle. Lah. So you open your water bottle. There we go. Main scale. Uh, okay, can't we kind of see? It's very hard to see this one here. So I'm going to have to use a lot of pictures. Okay. This one here is your main scale. The one you can open, open, open. Then this one that is turning, turning one. This is what we call the thimble. So that's the one over here. It's also known as the vernier scale. So what is the vernier scale? Well, similar to a vernier caliper. You have all these tiny sections here. Yeah, let me put this a bit. Ah, this tiny section. Okay, this vernier scale zooms into one tiny section. How you know leh? Okay la, see. If I put this at 10, right here. And 0, okay there. So that is at 10 and here you see it's at 0. So that means this is exactly at 10. 10 what? Don't know. You'll find out 10 millimeter la, I tell you first, okay. So whatever is on here is all millimeters. 0 millimeter, 5 millimeter, 10 millimeter. But but you see oh. Here is 5. What is this thing down here? Ooh, we will look at that later because it's a bit hard to see in these things. But anyway, the point is from 10 here. Give me a second to get there. And we are at 10. Notice what numbers change here on this as I, as I rotate. 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. Eh? Go until 50 or near. Okay, so when it's here at this 0, means you're at 10 point what? 10.50. How you know? Well, let's take a look at our picture. So yes, here, the first one you want to do is, like what we did, you find what is this reading on top. Notice how there's top and bottom, top and bottom, right? So, what's happening is, this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Ah, very small. All this thing, you'll need good eyesight, I told you already, right? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So what's the thing down here? Leh? This one is 0, 0.5. This is hard to see. Then 1. Then 1.5, then 2, then this one is 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4. Why this 0 0.5, 0 0.5? It's because your one turn of this one only is until 50. Okay, so whenever you have a full turn here, then you will move this thing from here to here. It's a very small difference only. Ah, yeah. Go and play with it, you understand more, okay? This one seems funny. Okay, so let's say in this case of the picture, the main reading is 4. And you look at the vernier scale, it's kind of 5, 6, 8, 9, but 9.5, 9. You can choose either one or you can either choose 10 or 9. 9 is this one right here. 9, this line. This is 9, this is 10. So you choose one. I guess I'm going to choose 9. Just a smaller value. But that's uncertainty, right? Limitation of instrument. You cannot measure smaller because this is the smallest. So you have 4 from your main scale plus, now be careful of this one, 0 0.09. And that is your final reading. 
Okay, so the biggest on your vernier scale is here you say 50, right? This will be 0 0.50 milliliter. Okay, that is the smallest that you can uh, oh sorry, that is one full turn on your rotating part. Okay, so here's a measurement check. Dun, 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 dun. Oh. What is the answer for this? What is this reading? Look and see. This is a past year question in paper 2, so you have to know how to use it and also know how to read it in paper 2. What is the measurement? Pause if you need more time because I'm going to scroll through the answer right now. The answer is... Dun, dun, dun. Let's go down. Well, reminder, this is 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5. Because it's 0 0.5 mm per revolution. So one revolution will move your thing from here to here. Okay, This whole thing will move out as you open it. Okay, So we know this is 3.5 something. That's here. What is the something? Then you look at this part. So what aligns with the middle? This, this is what? 31 ah. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. Yes, 31. So 31. So how to add leh? 0 0.31 mm. So this is 0 0.31 mm. And you are adding ah. Uh, here is 35, 0 0.31. So your total reading is 0, uh, 3.81 millimeter. All these are all in millimeters. Millimeter, millimeter, millimeter. Okay. Hopefully you got that one, right? It's not time to review a little bit. Okay, so I remember I talked about zero error, right? Now, the micrometer screw gauge is prone to zero error. Confirm got zero error one because you will spoil it. So how to how to check? Leh? So first thing you do is you go take your, your micrometer, you close it. It's going to take a while for me to close it. Okay, now I'm just clockwise turning like I'm closing my water bottle. I like to hold the end because that's like a safety so I don't over tighten because these things are, can spoil very easily. Right? Very delicate instruments. So, oh. Okay, if I hear ka ka, then don't turn anymore already. So, it should be closed tight. If somebody spoil your micrometer, then good luck. You have zero error. So, oh, this one looks like it has zero error. So, we are pointing at zero, but look where the zero is. It's not exactly at zero. It's kind of like between zero and one. So you could say there's a zero error of, I don't know, this thing here, but it's kind of in between, so I'm going to ignore it. Yeah, negligible zero error. We'll consider this in our uncertainty anyway. Okay, so how do you check for positive or negative zero error? You go to close it, like I say, if the center line is above your zero. Your zero is this one. Okay, this is our zero line. But our center line is here. They should align all, but they don't. So this is what we call a positive zero error. So this is positive 0 0.02 millimeter. So whatever measurement you have, you measurement you got already, you must remember to minus your positive zero error. So here minus law, minus positive error, and then your actual reading. So remember to take this into account when you're doing experiments for zero error. What is negative zero error? Like? Negative zero error is similar. You have your center line here, but your zero is here. Oh, so your center line is below the zero already. So we call this a negative zero error. It's kind of like negative 0 0.01, but also 0 0.02. You choose lah, got uncertainty there. We don't know for sure. It's a limitation of our instrument. So below zero, this is what we call a negative zero error. So make sure whatever measurement you have, you minus the negative zero error to get your actual reading. Okay? Now some tips on how to deal with your micrometer. Last ones. Okay, so when you are tightening, let's say you want to measure, what do I have? Something really small. Ah, yes. So I want to measure diameter of a wire. Or something really, really tiny. This is when your micrometer will come very handy. So let's say I have this. Ooh, this wire is squishy, so don't over tighten. So first thing you do, you open it, and you close it in. Now this is the part where a lot of people have lots of problems because they over tighten. So I'm gonna 
I'm struggling here. Need more hands. Titan. So one way to do it is you put the item there. Like that. And you tighten all this part and then you tighten it. When go one kra sound, you hear that? I make it for you again. Okay, the kra sound. Then you stop ready. Because if you force it to tighten anymore, you're gonna squash this wire and your reading will be off. That's one way to do it. A second way to do it, and perhaps a more reliable way is, when you're testing your zero error, you close it up first. You feel the tightness of this. So this is kind of do it. Oh, when you feel like it locked close already, you will know it. Then you recognize that feeling. Oh, this one has to come with experience. Then you put the item inside there. When you feel like that tightness, you stop. So there's two ways to do it. You feel it, but you need a lot of lab experience to feel it. Or you use your, what's this called again? Uh, ratchet. Ah, uh, yes, your ratchet to help you gauge. Crack one time, then you stop. A lot of people, when they're measuring wire diameter, I always over tighten. Sure, got problem one. If you're measuring something more challenging, like maybe, let's look at this wheel again. Ah, maybe this thin plastic strip here. What is the thickness of it? Wow, then you have to go and very carefully try to get it in there. See, this is so hard to do. Got so much uncertainty. So, I, uh, something like that. Oh, I feel it tighten. So, something like that. Anyway, you get the point. Some things are much harder to, you know, measure. If it's wires, then okay lah, not too bad. If it's a ruler, a thin metal ruler, this one's quite easy because it's uniform. So you just put the ruler in, tighten very carefully, wait for the single click if you're using the ratchet. There, one click, lock it. That's what the lock is for. This is in lock position. So yeah, you have an uncertainty of, well, the smallest division is 0 0.01 mm. But you can take your reading and make sure to estimate a little bit more. For good measure, if you are in a question 2, Okay, let me unlock first. Unlock. Open. Take the diameter at multiple places. Oh. The ruler is so long, right? You take your measurement here. Take measurement here. Take measurement here. Go down some more. Take measurement. Take measurement at many, many places. And find the average. That is the best experimental way to estimate your uncertainty. So hopefully that was helpful in understanding how to read your... Micrometer, just make sure you remember how to read it when the time comes in lab. Alright, see you and bye-bye.